Shalom. Shalom, everybody. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We greet you all in the name of Ahaya Ashre Ahaya, and our Adono Yache Mesiaka, and our Mother Ruaka Kwadosi. We are Hebrew Readers Church here in the Pillar of Egypt. We hope you all have been enjoying the edification that has been brought forth. I am your brother Kasafo. And I'm your brother Zakwa. We invite you all, those of you that are new, to this opportunity of life in Yache with us. And for those of you who've been with us, hey, <laughs> glad to have y'all here again. Hey, family. I hope y'all are striving and staying encouraged in these times, being in joy. So today, finally, the two witnesses. <laughs> Less than everybody's been waiting on the two witnesses. Who are the two witnesses? What is the understanding of the two witnesses? Let's get understanding of it today. All right. Firstly, the two witnesses are two people, one from the tribe of Judah and the other from the tribe of Levi. Ziacha has always sent his disciples out in twos. As you know, Ahaya gave the lesson on the end shall be like the Exodus. And there were two witnesses sent then, Moses and Aaron. He had gave them Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. Moses was the similitude of Yache. He was meek, most meek of all men of the earth. Let's see how it was even so with two people that would be sent in the days of the apostles as well. Acts chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 please. Acts chapter 13 verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers at Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. There were certain prophets and teachers. So you see how they would be sent in twos and you see Simeon that was called Niger because the word Niger or what is known as Negro actually this is an ancient word that they were using to reference the Israelites. Right. It's a term for what we know as black today to let you know even biblically the Negroes are the Israelites of the southern kingdom, that is. And there's some of the northern kingdom who actually look like Negroes and don't even know they're of the northern kingdom. Right. <laughs> so continue, please. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manine, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to Ahia and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. When Yahshua's people are sent, it's the work of Allahim, and you'll know them by their fruits. Because if the Holy Spirit sends them, it's the fruits of the Spirit that's with them as well. Right. They're not ones that self-appoint themselves and take on titles on their own accord, but they go and do as they are told to do. Can we also see that Yache, when he was with his disciples in the earth, he sent them out by twos. Can you look at Mark 6, verse 7, please? And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. That's how you know when Yache is sending his people. He gives them power. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 3, please. And I would give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. When Yahshua give powers to these two witnesses, they're going to prophesy. And when they prophesy, it's for edification, exhortation, and comfort. It's the true gospel that's going to be preached. And the gospel of repentance. Can you read 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 and verse 3, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. That's the duty of the witnesses, because he's going to give them power, and they're going to prophesy clothed in sackcloth. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, and, and exhortation, and, and comfort. They will not only preach, they will also follow charity, because the spirit of charity edifies too. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puff us up, but charity edify us. So you can see how because they have to follow after charity, it's going to lead to people being edified. The gospel is not going to just be about knowledge, but it's going to be about power, walking in the demonstration of the Spirit, which truly edifies a person because they get to see the example of Christ, even as Christ came to set the example himself. And we can look at how true preaching happens. It's not according to just a multitude of information and a multitude of words. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, please. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. 
And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Allah. There you have scriptural understanding of how to know where the true gospel is being preached. It's not being preached to make you feel like you just don't know anything and you haven't been brought up to speed. But it's for your edification and for your growth and for your exhortation so that you may be raised up in the hope of Yacha being founded and not being tossed to and fro with false doctrine. When they're sent, let's see how it's going to help the body in truth. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 15, please. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. So we see what the goal is. The two witnesses are being sent so that we may all come in the unity of the faith. It's for the gathering of Yahweh's people, of the Israelites and of the Gentiles. Continue. And of the knowledge of the Son of Allah, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Through the preaching of the two witnesses, the church is going to attain to the measure of the stature of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, it's interesting that you can see through Ephesians what they're being sent to do. They will be prophesying the true gospel to nourish the church during the initial 1260 days when Satan gives power unto the beast. Can you read Revelations 12 and 6, please? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of Allah, that they should feed her there are a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's the same thousand two hundred and three score days of Revelations 11 and 3. Mm -hmm. Where they shall feed her. Can we go to Matthew 24 and 14, please? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. They have to preach that gospel before the end. And all nations have to hear it. The forefathers knew the two witnesses will come from Judah and Levi as well. You read Revelations 11 and 4, please. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before Allah of the earth. These two witnesses that stand before the Allah of the earth, according to Revelations 11 and 4, it was prophesied even by Dan the patriarch that they shall make Israel stand. Testament of Dan, chapter 5, verse 4, please. I know that in the last days ye shall depart from Ahiah. And ye shall provoke Levi unto anger and fight against Judah. But ye shall not prevail against them. For an angel of Ahiah shall guide them both. This is letting you know who's guiding Judah and Levi. Because Yahweh said in Revelations 11 and 3 that he will give power unto his two witnesses. For by them shall Israel stand. Through that preaching that Yahweh is guiding them both to do, Israel will stand and be fervent and zealous for the law. Let's look at the Testament of Naphtali, chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, please. Testament of Naphtali, chapter 5, verse 1. For in the fortieth year of my life, I saw a vision on the Mount of Olives, on the east of Jerusalem, that the sun and the moon were standing still. And behold, Isaac, the father of my father, said to us, Run and lay hold of them, each one according to his strength, and to him that seized them with the sun and moon belong. And we all of us ran together, and Levi laid hold of the sun, and Judah outstripped the others and seized the moons, and they were both of them lifted up with them. And when Levi became as a son, lo, a certain man gave to him twelve branches of palm, and Judah was bright as the moon, and under their feet were twelve rays. Now you see how the light shines out of them. You see how the sun and the moon gives the light for the children of Israel to stand. That's why Testament of Dad said, For by them shall Israel stand, and right. the angel of Ahiah will guide them. Let's look also in Testament of Laughter, chapter 8, verse 1 and 4, please. 
testament to Nephilim, chapter 8, verse 1. And lo, my children, I have shown unto thee the last time. He, what was this vision about? I have shown unto you the last time. This is letting us know this was about the end times, so you can understand that this wasn't just Judah and Levi, the tribe, right. but Judah and Levi, the man. This is a representation of their seed in the last times. Okay, continue, please. How everything shall come to pass in Israel. Right. Do ye also therefore charge your children that they be united unto Levi and to Judah. You see why the fathers are admonishing their children to follow Judah and Levi? Because they understood that's where the salvation is going to come from when the angel guides them and makes Israel stand. Continue. For through them shall salvation arise unto Israel, and in them shall Jacob be blessed. For through their tribes shall Elohim appear, dwelling among men on earth to save the race of Israel. So this salvation is to save the race of Israel and to gather together the righteous from amongst the Gentiles. It's for the Gentiles too. That's how you know this is speaking of the end times. Right. This is to gather them all, all the Elohim's people. This is what is to come. This is what the forefathers were seeing. Continue, please. In Zechariah chapter 4, the two witnesses were shown but the fullness was not revealed in his book until John was given an understanding and revelations. That's right. Zachariah also saw them, didn't know who they were at the time. Can we get into that, please? Sure. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me, as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it. And the candlestick is a church, as we've seen it in Revelation, the seven churches. Okay. And his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 3. And two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Revelation 11 and 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before Elohim of the earth. Continue, please, so we can see by precept to understand who he's speaking of. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, <laughs> my Adonah. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Adonah of the whole earth. So those two olive trees are two people. Okay. All right. Can you continue Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, and verse 9 and 10, please? Sure. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Ahiah unto Zerubbabel, saying, Now, this is getting interesting. We've been looking at how it was Judah and Levi, right? After the Babylonian captivity, who were quote-unquote, leaders to lead the people back to the land to rebuild the temple. What tribes did they come from? Judah and Levi. <laughs> and here we're seeing that was a testimony of what's coming to pass in these end times. People are being brought out of Babylon again, and the temple is being built according right. to the Spirit. <laughs> it's all coming to pass. Uh, can you read it there, please, brother? It says... This is the word of Ahiah unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Ahiah of hosts. Now, that lets us know, is not carnally, this is coming to pass, but by his spirit. The okay. hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know okay. that Ahiah of hosts hath sent me unto you. Verse 10, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hands of the Zerubbabel with those seven. Now this lets you know 
who he was really talking about when he was saying Zerubbabel. Because <laughs> he says, you shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. Right. Who are those seven that Zerubbabel is with? That was just speaking about the man Zerubbabel. He was prophesying to Zerubbabel because he actually come from his Lord. Right. And those seven, let's see who those seven are. Continue reading, please. They are the eyes of Ahiah, which run to and fro through the whole earth. So you can see how these things are coming to pass indeed. And you can read Revelation chapter 5, verse 6 to 7, to see that the eyes that were spoken of here in Zechariah 4 and 10 are the seven spirits of Allah I am sent forth into all the earth. So you can understand that from the Old Testament to the New Testament, these things are just getting further revealed. And we look at Haggai, chapter 1, verse 14, please. And Ahiah stirred up the spirit of the Robabel, the son of Shalatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of Ahiah of hosts, their Elohim. So we see who is going to cause these people to believe. Who is going to cause them to be stirred up to come and partake in the work of building the house of Elohim? As I had stirred these people up to go do this physical work. And in these end times, the Spirit is going to stir Ahadiah's people up to do the work within, the true work of building the temple by purging ourselves, by putting on the fruits of the Spirit. Can you read Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 to 9 as well, please? Sure. Yeah, that was Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, actually. Okay. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of Ahiah by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shalatiel, governor of Judah. That's from the king's seat there. Continue, please. And to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. That, and there we see that's from the seed of Aaron. The two ones that were committed to fulfill the work of building the temple were from the seed of Judah and Levi to understand that the witnesses would be from those two tribes. All right, continue, please. And to the residue of the people, saying, Who right. is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Now, note this is said to the residue of the people. So this work of building the temple isn't something that is only the two witnesses. All right. It's the whole church. The whole residue. And it isn't amazing that he said residue because we know that shall be a remnant of Israel. Right. Continue. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith Ahiah. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith Ahiah, and work. For I am with you, saith Ahiah of hosts. He is not a man as such as one that would break his word. Because he said, I am what you said, I have hopes. And in verse 5, He said, according to the word, That I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. So, we have help. We have encouragement to know that it's the spirit that's doing it. We can know that the Spirit is the one that's going to bring it to pass. We'll continue in Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 to 9. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith Ahiah of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith Ahiah of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith Ahiah of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith Ahiah of hosts. You we know that we're speaking of this temple that is going to build hands in the end times. We're building the true temple, which is the church. So we've seen here in Zechariah and Haggai, they were prophesying of these things. Now let's look at the patriarchs. Let's go back and get an understanding of what's coming to pass here as well. Can you read Testament of Reuben, chapter 6, verse 8 to 12, please? Sure. Therefore I command you to hearken to Levi, because he shall know the law of Ahiah, 
and shall give ordinances for judgment, and shall sacrifice for all Israel until the consummation of the times. As the anointed high priest, of whom Ahia spake, I adjure you by the Allah of heaven to do truth each one unto his neighbor, and to entertain love each one for his brother, and draw near to Levi in humbleness of heart, that ye may receive a blessing from his mouth. For he shall bless Israel and Judah, because him hath Ahia chosen to be king over all the nations. And bow down before his seed, for on our behalf it will die in wars visible and invisible, and will be among you an eternal king. Can we also read Testament of Simeon, chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, please? And now, my children, obey Levi and Judah, and be not lifted up against these two tribes. For from them shall arise unto you the salvation of Elohim. He said, from them. That's not speaking of the whole tribe of Levi, nor the whole tribe of Judah. He's speaking particularly of their seed. Can you read that part again, please? Sure. Obey Levi and Judah, and be not lifted up against these two tribes. For from them shall arise unto you the salvation of Elohim. For Ahia shall raise up from Levi, as it were a high priest. And from Notice, this is people. This isn't the whole tribe, right? right? Continue. And from Judah, as it were, a king. He shall save all the race of Israel. Therefore I give you these commands, that ye also may command your children, that they may observe them throughout their generations. See how the forefathers, they were adamant about telling their children to make sure they hearken, so that they may be guided. Levi had understanding of the law, and then Judah was given wisdom to be a lawgiver to help understand how to apply the law, how to operate in the law, in righteousness. This to be a testimony. That's why Yache didn't come just giving precept on precept, teaching a bunch of precepts. Moses was that lawgiver that gave all the precepts, that <laughs> gave you all the commandments. And then Yache came and showed you how to live it, how to live according to the law, how to actually be a testimony. Let's continue in Testament of Gad. Chapter 8, verse 1, please. Testament of God, chapter 8, verse 1. Do ye therefore, do ye also therefore tell these things to your children, that they honor Judah and Levi? For from them shall I have raised up salvation to Israel. Again, it says from them. All right. Let's also look at Testament of Issachar, chapter 5, verse 6 to 7, please. For our father Jacob blessed me with blessings of the earth and of the first fruits. And Levi and Judah were glorified by Ahiah even among the sons of Jacob. For Ahiah gave them an inheritance, and to Levi he gave the priesthood, and to Judah the kingdom. And do ye therefore. These. Now, it said Ahiah glorified them, right? And one would think that this is speaking of, you know, boasting. But these two. Blessings that they were given, this is servitude. Because the priests have to minister unto the people. And the king has to minister unto the people to make sure the whole kingdom is in order. That's why Yache came and told, He that is chief, let him be as the younger. Or he that is chief among you, let him be as one that served. Because even Yache came to serve. So you can see that that blessing that was given to Judah and Levi was to be servant unto all their brethren. Now, can you read verse 8 now, please? And do ye therefore obey them, and walk in the singleness of your father. Dan also understood what was to come in the end. Let's look at Testament of Dan, chapter 5, verse 8 to 13, please. Therefore shall ye be led away with them into captivity, and there shall ye receive all the plagues of Egypt, and all the evils of the Gentiles. And so when you return to Ahia, ye shall obtain mercy, and he shall bring you into a sanctuary, and he shall give you peace. And there shall arise unto you from the tribe of Judah and of Levi the salvation of Ahia. And he shall make war against Belier, and execute an everlasting vengeance on our enemies. And the captivity shall he take from Belier, the souls of the saints, and turn disobedient hearts unto Ahia, 
and give to them that call upon him eternal peace. The name Yache, the only name given under heaven where we may be saved. So you can see how these times is just amazing how it's all coming together. We have to call upon him. We have to call upon the Jonah Yache or the Lord Yache for that peace to be upon us, for us to be strengthened to overcome. One may wonder why is it so important to call upon the name? Why is this so important to call upon the right name? See, he's going to give peace to them that call upon him. This is why this, this name, Yache, is important. Praise the Hayah for revealing it so that we may be saved. All right, continue. You're at verse 12 now. Yes. And the saints shall rest in Eden, and in the new Jerusalem shall the righteous rejoice, and it shall be unto the glory of Allah forever. All right. And no longer shall Jerusalem endure desolation, nor Israel be led captive. For Ahiah shall be in the midst of it, living amongst men. And the Holy One of Israel shall reign over it in humility and in poverty. And he who believeth on him shall reign amongst men in truth. You see how the admonition, the forefathers are admonishing us and preparing us for what's to come. Let's touch on Testament of Zebulon, chapter 9, verse 8, please. And after these things shall there arise unto you Adonai himself, the light of righteousness, and healing and compassion shall be in his wings. He shall redeem all the captivity of the sons of men from Belier, and every spirit of deceit shall be trodden down. And he shall bring back all the Gentiles into zeal for him. <laughs> <laughs> Yache is coming for all his people. Can you read that part again, please? <laughs> and he shall bring back all the Gentiles into zeal for him. And ye shall return unto your land, and ye shall see him in Jerusalem for his name's sake. And we know he's coming down in Jerusalem. That's how you know when that end time comes, you're going to see him in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. 144,000 going to see him coming. I know you wanted to touch on the, and healing and compassion shall be in his wings. It said, and after these things there shall arise unto you Adonai himself, and the light of righteousness, and healing and compassion shall be in his wings, because it's Yache who's operating in the two witnesses. So he's coming down through the two witnesses. That's why I said, and healing and compassion shall be in his wings, because those who's going to be helping him pretty much fly the people, to pretty much soar the people. It's interesting that those two witnesses are going to be operating in righteousness because it said in healing and compassion, showing that they were going to be operating in true righteousness of the fruits of the Spirit and the goodness of Allah I am. So, it's amazing. <laughs> the forefathers were prophets, man. Right. The wings are what holds up a bird. So, you can see how our forefathers were exhorting us about Judah and Levi because they were actually going to be holding up the bird or the body of Yahweh's church. It's just amazing what Yahweh had you say there. Because now it makes the words more powerful. Earlier on, we had seen in Revelations 12 and 6 that the two witnesses would nourish the woman because it said they should feed her. Now, with understanding them also being represented by the wings through Zebulon, we can also understand the vision John saw in Revelations 12 and 14. Because the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into the wilderness. Revelations 12 and 14 said, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Yache is the great eagle. Now we know the wings are the two witnesses that were given to help the woman fly, even as Zachwa was speaking about, and they'll be there to get her to her place to be nourished for the three and a half years to come here in these end times. And now, Levi. Let's see what was told to Levi concerning these things. Levi was shown that he was to teach the people the light of the law by Yahweh's guidance, and it would be him and Judah to prepare the way for Yahweh 
to save all the nation. We can look at the Testament of Levi, chapter 4, verse 2 to 6. Therefore the Most High hath heard thy prayer, to separate thee from iniquity, and that thou shouldest become to him a son, and a servant, and a minister of his presence. The light of knowledge shalt thou light up in Jacob. That's why this true gospel, there has to be a Levite there. Because this is the prophecy, how it's going to be fulfilled. Okay? Because they have to come to the light of righteousness. All the prophecy showed is Yahweh doing it. Is Yahweh putting the light in him to be able to edify and bring the light of the law to the house of Jacob. Continue, please. And after the son shalt thou be to all the seed of Israel. And there shall be given to thee a blessing, and to all thy seed, until Ahiah shall visit all the Gentiles in his tender mercies forever. And therefore there have been given to thee counsel and understanding, that thou mightest instruct thy sons concerning this. Because they that bless him shall be blessed, and they that curse him shall perish. Chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And when thou hast ascended thither, thou shalt stand near Ahiah, and shalt be his minister, and shalt declare his mysteries to men, and shalt proclaim concerning him that shall redeem Israel. And by thee and Judah shall Ahiah appear among men, saving every race of men. Now, of all the places we went, all the different verses we went for understanding, right here, it's very plain right. what was prophesied to come. So, Brother Zach, well, can you please read that again? Sure. Wait, this is, helps understand very straightly that it's not the whole tribe of Israel and the whole tribe of the southern kingdom. That's the two witnesses, specifically Judah and Levi. In the Testament of Levi, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, please. And when thou hast ascended thither, thou shalt stand near Ahiah, and shalt be his minister, and shalt declare his mysteries to men, and shalt proclaim concerning him that shall redeem Israel. And now... By when did Levi actually do that? Levi, he has ascended. He's, he's in the heaven. He's minister unto Ahiah. This is, this is his seed that would be doing this. And his name is named upon his children. This is going to come from his seed, declaring the mysteries to men, proclaiming concerning him that is to redeem Israel. Continue verse 11, please. And by thee in Judah shall Ahiah appear among men, saving every race of men. This is what's to come in the end. As this is when he's come to save every race of men. When Yahshua came on the earth, he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the mystery was that he came also for the Gentiles, but it wasn't revealed at that time. And then after, the preaching came forth that the Gentiles are being grafted in. When he comes here in the end of the world, he's saving every race that belongs to him. So it's from Levi's seed and Judah's seed that this will come to pass. Can you read the Testament of Judah, chapter 24, verse 1, please? And after these things shall a star arise to you from Jacob in peace. And a man shall arise from my seed, like the son of righteousness, walking, yes, yeah, walking with the sons of men in meekness and righteousness, and no sin right. shall be found in him. That's the testimony that the witnesses have to be in. Can you read it? Chapter 18 of Testament of Judah, verse 3 and 4, please. Sure. And his star shall arise in heaven as of a king, lighting up the light of knowledge as the sun the day. So we see who is actually lighting up the light of knowledge is Yahweh. Right. He's actually one that's doing it. It is not anything for a man to glory in as if one has a bunch of wisdom. Knowing that it's actually Yahweh that's doing it. And continue, please. And he shall be magnified in the world. He shall shine forth as the sun on the earth, and shall remove all darkness from under heaven, and there shall be peace in all the earth. So can we read Testament of Judah, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10? Please? Testament of Judah, chapter 3, verse 9. Therefore my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel might follow me everywhere that I should not be overcome. There we 
we see why Judah prospered. We see the humility of Judah as well, because he understood who was helping him. He didn't trust in himself, but he understood that Allah Hayyam was keeping him. Ahayah bestowed honor on Judah because of his humility, and he instructed his sons to walk in his humility. Even as Yacha is humble, though he has much honor of the Father, and we read Testament of Judah, chapter 21, verse 1 to 5, uh, please. And now, my children, I command you, love Levi, that ye may abide and exalt not yourselves against him. Lest ye be utterly destroyed. For to me Ahiah gave the kingdom, and to him the priesthood. And he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of Elohim higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from Ahiah and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. So the tribes of Judah and Levi, and more particularly the two witnesses, have to be more humble than all because of the great responsibility upon them. And it's the only way the true gospel shall be preached because mysteries are revealed unto the lowly. Can we read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18 to 20, please? The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before Ahia. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of Ahia is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Witnesses are going to be given power to bear the burden of the sanctuary, bear the burden of the congregation in these end times. People are really going to need it. They have to see the testimony of Yahshua. Now, the prophets have the spirit of Yahshua, those two prophets, those two witnesses. And they have the spirit of Yahshua in them, and they bear the fruits of the spirit and preach repentance. That is what they're going to do these times to come. Third Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 please. For Elohim who is over all that so die the one who made heaven and earth sent prophets to the Jews first of all that they might be pulled away from their sins. For he wanted to save the house of Israel and so he sent a portion of the spirit of Messiah into the prophets who proclaimed the true worship of Elohim for many years. So you see what the spirit of Messiah sends his prophets to do? Proclaim the true worship of Elohim. Praise the answer for guidance. It's consistent that Judah and Levi, it would be of their posterity that would be these two witnesses in these end times. How's that sound? Okay. All right.